Hello, it's Elena. And Heather. And we're from the local lowdown. We're here with Street Cleaver uh, outside of BJ's in Fredonia after an incredible set. Great job. Thank you. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, would you be able to introduce yourself and kind of what you do? Okay. Uh, my name is George Moore. I live in Jamestown. I've lived there all my life. I am a visual artist uh, slash uh, experimental uh, electronic industrial um, just broad <laughs> solo artist. Um, I've been doing this project for about six years now. Um, what, what else would you like to know? Oh, yeah. No, that's <laughs> awesome. Um, <laughs> we love knowing about you. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So next question. Dad Bod and Trash Sleeves were your latest release or was your latest release, sorry. Um, these tracks were recorded during the True Negative Harsh Trilogy sessions, but were not included in the EPs. Why didn't these tracks make the cut? Um, I just didn't feel like, okay, Dad Bod specifically was just this, like, <laughs> it's funny because the title of that song was just the working title and I never changed it. So I, I always title things goofy names. And that one, I was just like, I'm just going to keep it Dad Bod. But um, uh, I just didn't, it didn't fit... I just didn't feel like it was angry enough, I guess, or it was just a little too upbeat. I don't know. It's, I didn't really, I, I kind of have tracks like stockpiled. And then when one, when like a band camp Friday comes out or whatever, I start thinking about doing a release and I'll go to, you know, the stuff that, you know, didn't make it to releases. I'm, I'm picky with releases. Like I want to, I, I usually do short ones. I don't, I've never draw, done like a long drawn out album. It's usually just EPs, maybe seven or eight songs. So I, I try to like group together songs that have a specific like not theme but just specific feel to them like what I was feeling when I created them. So those two just didn't really fit in either of the other releases. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, so also you worked with artists KB, Weston Zirkus, and Deathbed Tapes to design uh, your covers. So do you want to talk about the process of working with them or what it was like? Okay. Oh, K KB, uh, that's Dog Bites Back mm -hmm. and Deathbed. And was there one more? Uh, Western Circus. Oh, Western Circus. Oh, well, um, all of them are people that I've connected with by um, just being in like, mm -hmm. like, well, Weston specifically, I've known him for a while. He's, he lives out in Ithaca and he does, oh. he does noise and experimental music. Um, he does a project called Sunken Cheek, which I really liked, and I booked a couple times in Jamestown. And so we've been in touch, and we've, you know, traded shows here and there. And he's also a great visual artist who, like, does, um, he, he'll, he'll make things with, like, an old Xerox machine and just, like, like swirl the stuff around, like, while it's um, copying and just does this oh, wow. amazing visual art. So, so I asked him to do a release. Um, Dog Bites Back. Uh, is a Rochester artist that I found on Instagram and um, she was just she had these great like just collage work like um, like high contrast very kind of like gritty stuff that I that I really liked it really caught my eye so um, you know I asked her you know if she could you know take one of the designs off her page and you know put my logo around it and stuff and um, Alex from Deathbed Tapes uh, he pretty much does all the art for that label that that's his label. And uh, he yeah, so I, I reached out to him because I was a fan of the art on the, the releases for his label. And I had him make a make a cover for a cassette. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Next question here. Uh, the Remix Collect 2 contains remixes collected over the course of two years. What was it like to give up your own creation and let other artists put their own spin on it? I absolutely love doing um, remix albums and having people remix things for me. It's great because I've connected with so many people from different like underground communities and scenes, um, you know, like Tiny the Dream, for example, you know, like of all different genres too, not just like noise and industrial like I do, but like hip hop and just like more ambient stuff. So after like I release something and I'm sort of taking a break, I'll, I'll see if I can get my friends to like um, do, do mixes for me. And I'll, you know, I'll just sort of like pester them a little while. And yeah. it takes, takes a little while to get them all collected. That's why, I mean, there's like two years between the, yeah. the remix uh, collections. 
Um, but yeah, it's just a really fun thing to do. And I really love just hearing other people's interpretations of, of my work. And it just makes for such a, a diverse album. And it's just like such an entertaining listen to me anyway, yeah. because each track is so different from the yeah. last one or the one after yeah. it. Yeah, I really like that concept. That's really cool. Thank you. Yeah. And then also, uh, we were looking into your Instagram bio. Definitely go follow. Uh, but it reveals that you take a strong uh, stance against bigotry. Has that influenced your music in any way? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm... Uh I mean, I, I'm not going to say I'm like a, a activist or anything like that, but I mean, I have a very pro POC, pro queer, um, you know, that's, that's how I am. You know, I'm non-binary myself and I just, I, I want to make that public because I'm, I'm also particular about like who is listening to my stuff. You know, I don't want like any sketchy, you know, jerks <laughs> supporting my stuff because I don't, I don't support that stuff myself. So it's, you know. Yeah. Hey guys, it's Alex here with the local lowdown. And while my official job is making sure all this electronics, all this production stuff is working correctly, I got a true passion in life. And that's being the merchiest gremlin alive, collecting as <laughs> much band merch as possible. And let me tell you, when I was doing my research, just one scroll on your band camp, it's filled with goodies. It yeah. is <laughs> filled with treasures. Yeah. So I got to ask, well, what what's like the reasoning for you know creating so much like amazing like tapes and CDs of everything you know uh, especially um, cassettes like don't get me wrong I love cassettes I'm always collecting cassettes yeah. it's definitely like a niche you know a niche type of merch though so what's yeah what's the reasoning behind that um I think maybe it was probably like ten or so years ago that I noticed like the resurgence of the cassette and I like a, a few indie labels were doing it, like definitely not as many as there are now. I mean, now you can like buy tapes at Urban Outfitters and stuff, sorry. Um, but uh, yeah, it was uh, it was just that I knew I, at the time it was something different. Um, and I also, I just really love physical media and I feel like it's, it's cooler to like give something give someone something with like a package around it or something that's like handmade or whatever because they feel like you know it's something special instead of just like files on a computer or streaming off a, a streaming site or whatever so i like to i and also like personally for my own archives i like to have like a bunch of cool stuff yeah, i've yeah. put i've put releases out on just obscure formats like eight track that was that was a different project but yeah if someone asks me to do something, I'll do it. Like I did a mini disc, which I didn't even know what a mini disc was. It's like a recording thing. It was had there was this little blip of time where it was a little popular in the 90s. But I don't know. This kid had like a, a recorder or whatever copier. And I was like, sure, why not? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. My little merch gremlin heart was very pleased. Yeah, I'll good. definitely have to be haunting around the merch table oh, after this you. interview. But let me bring it back to the host to end off the interview. <laughs> All right, so final question. What comes next? Any releases, any upcoming shows? What uh, you got in store? Well, I'm soon, probably by fall, I'm going to have my first vinyl LP out. Oh. And that's a, that's a full length that I'm doing through Phage Tapes, the label who does most of my other releases. Awesome. Um, I'm very excited about that. And I'm hoping to do a tour, maybe uh, Midwest. Last year I did an East Coast and now I wanna like move out there, like Chicago, Milwaukee. I've got yeah. some buddies out there and I just wanna check that out, see what people, I'm, I come from a small town where there's really not context for what I do. Yeah. So as soon as I like got serious about this project, I, I wanted to like get away from my town and see what other people thought in other places. Yeah. Um, so, more shows like that hopefully a tour mm -hmm. <laughs> and the record <laughs> yeah, yeah that's awesome well it was great talking to you it was great I meeting really you guys it. thank great you great set thank and you. thank you for everyone who's listening i'm elena and i'm heather with the local lowdown oh sorry and merch, and merch oh, yeah. uh thank you for listening and we'll catch you next time